Hi, I'm Sue Friedrich, and this video is d uh, organized in four chapters. And when you're working, if you've watched the video, you'll also have a Word document with the exact script from this so that you can always go back and look at that um, if you've forgotten anything. I first want to say that I've been making films for about 42 years. I've always done my own editing. So I started with Super 8 on a little splicer, went to 16 millimeter on the flatbed, went to Hi8 video with AB rolling, which was a nightmare, um, to digital, to Media 100 and Final Cut, and now we're at Premiere. So there are a few things I've learned along the way, and one of the main ones is how important it is to organize yourself at the beginning. And I know how it is, let's say you're a student or you're in a hurry and you just want to rush through. But if you do that, you're going to run into problems later. So we're going to start with me showing you how to set up everything properly so that later you're going to have a really great time editing. You won't be searching for files, you won't be losing things, whatever. So um, let's get your project started. The first thing you should do is always work from an external hard drive not from your laptop. And you know, two terabyte hard drives are really cheap now, so there's no reason to be working from your laptop. Plus, if you're in a school setting, you would have to be because you, know, you can't have five students using the same workstation and putting all their stuff on it. So basically, buy an external hard drive and use it. And if you're really smart, or you can afford it, buy a second hard drive, because that way, you're working on your project through your first hard drive, and every once in a while, you're saving it to your second hard drive because what happens if you lose your first hard drive, okay? So this is all about you being able to work really well, make a really good project, but also not lose it along the way. Um, and let's say, for the purposes of this, you're making a film about spaghetti carbonara because that's what we're going to be doing. Um, and you don't have a title yet, and spaghetti carbonara is very long, and you have always really want to have short names for things, and you'll see why later. So we're going to call this the Carbo Project. And so now we're going to go to the desktop. And also, um, I work on a PC. Um, Premiere is available on Mac or PC. So the display that you're seeing might seem odd because it's not a Mac, but that's OK, because otherwise it's all the same. So I'm in my hard drive, and I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call it Carbo project. Um, within that, and this is part of being well organized so later you've got everything you need exactly where it's supposed to be. So trust me, make all these folders now. You're going to make a series of folders. The first one is for your project files. So it's going to be called Carbo Project Files. And I like to um, make the, that folder a color. Um, so that I can spot it really easily. I'm not going to do it right now, but you'll see. The next one is Carbo Media Cache. And whoops. There are these, somehow files get indexed. And I don't even know what that means, but there are a lot of them. And they take up a lot of space. So you just want them somewhere on their own. And so you can, if you want to delete them later, if you run out of space, you can easily delete them. OK, uh, the next one, very important one, is called the Carbo Scratch Disk. And this is the name, whoops, misspelled, T, Scratch Disk. Um, the Scratch Disk is where all your footage is going to live. And I'll probably say this again later, but they call it the Scratch Disk. Um, and later, when you're putting the clips in, you can call them clips. But the main name should just be what relates to the way Premiere talks. OK. And right now, I'm going to make a folder within that, and you'll see why later, called Carbo Clips 7 3, because we're doing this on July 3rd. And we're going to be going back to that folder later. Then, if you're not doing anything that involves found footage, found audio, music, whatever. You don't have to do these. But chances are you'll be pulling some music to use. You might uh, pull some films, some still images, whatever it is. So you kind of want these two other folders. 
uh, Carbo found footage and images and Carbo music and found audio. Okay? So basically, what did this take? Two minutes. And it's great because that's what you need to do until, so that you can do the next thing. I cannot say this loudly enough. I'm going to take my glasses off. Never go into your SD card, look at your clips because you're curious, and rename them. Never, ever, ever, ever do that. And I say this, and then students do it. So I don't know how many times I should say never, but I've just said it a few times, and I really want you to listen and hear that and never name your clips when you're looking at them in the SD card, okay? And if, for example, you had a, you know, multiple days shoot, um, on the first day today, we created the Carbo Clips 7.3 folder, but if you shot four days from now, you would make a new folder called Carbo Clips 7, 7, or did I say three days, whatever, 7, 6, okay? And then, you know, again, 7, 11. Because every day that you go to shoot, you should reformat your SD card, because otherwise you're bringing all that old stuff again back into your project, which you don't need. Plus, you might run out of space on your card. So you're going to reformat your card. You're going to come back in with new footage, and then you're going to put it in a new folder so you know where everything is. This is the idea when you're editing. It's not just about really great ideas about the aesthetics. It's also about knowing where everything is. OK. So, um, so you've, gotten, you've made your Carbo 7.3 folder in your hard drive within your project folder. And now you're ready to bring in your footage from your SD card. For the purposes of this, this is obviously not an SD card. It's because I had to set this up beforehand. So let's pretend this is an SD card. And there are three folders, DSIM, MISC, and private, right? You're going to copy all of them into the 7.3 folder. Now, I'm not going to do this because it'll take a while, and you know what copying is, because I already have them stored somewhere else. But there's metadata and whatever in those other folders. You, you don't know what you might need later, so please just copy all of them into your card. It's OK. It's fine. So anyway, just do that. Copy, paste, you're done. OK. And, and sometimes, like, you'll see when, when we go into Premiere, you'll see how if you have a folder full of still images, you find the folder. You right click on import and you import them. Um, but you could also do that if you wanted to kind of screw yourself up. You could go into your SD card through the media browser window and import the things directly. But picture this. You did that, right? So you've got all your clips. You're really happy. You're working. You go out to shoot more. You go out to shoot some more. That original stuff. Has, you know, the card's been reformatted, it's long gone, and then something goes wrong. And some of the clips that you first did the easy import with get corrupted. And that means you can no longer work with them. So it doesn't make any sense to do the direct import through Premiere. It makes sense to take your material and save it safely onto your hard drive so that if anything goes wrong, you can always get it back. OK. We'll get on to like, fun stuff later, but this, this is all about the warnings. But they're really, they're really worth listening to. OK, so now you're ready to create your first project. And if you don't have Premiere set up already or you know, pinned to your desktop, you want to go to, and again, this is the PC version of it, but you're going to um, Applications and go to Adobe Premiere and click to open it. And then we wait for it to open. And we think about going to the circus. Or no, I guess that's one of those bike things. 
And this is the only time you have to do this because then you'll have your projects folder and there will be your you know current version of it and you'll go into that and just double click on that and open it from there. So you're only you only need to do this at the outset. Okay. Um, so in the top, you do file new project. And I'm going to say it now and I'll keep saying it. You don't say OK until you're done, right? When you see that OK, just pause. OK, in the general tab, you're going to name your project for today. And so that's called Carbo 76A. You always use dashes. You don't use dots because a dot can make the think what's after is an extension. You also use the letter A now because you'll learn later why you're doing that. Then you need to put your project into the correct location. So it's obviously going to go into the folder within your main project folder. So you're going to browse for it. And there's our Carbo project. And within that is our project files folder. And that's where you're going to put it. Uh, the rest of it, uh, use the default settings. They're fine. OK, don't hit OK because there's another tab up here, and it's the Scratch Disks tab. You basically put all of them in the same place, which is at the top layer of your project folder. So I'm going to browse. These are from no another one. So I'm going to browse. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go there. And I'm going to select the folder. And I'm just going to go through this over and over again, which is really boring. Um, select folder. Folder, 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 select folder. OK. There are three tabs. The third one is called ingest settings. I have no idea what it is. So we're going to now press OK. And your project opened. And here's a hot tip. Um, if you ever need to reset your scratch disks, if you didn't put them in the right place, um, all you have to do is go to Files and pr down to Project Settings. And that same thing will open. And you could just go to the scratch disks and you redo it. So if you went too quickly and you maybe put things in the wrong place, you might want to open your project folder just to see whether Everything that's supposed to have gone there has gone there. And what you'll also see, I'm going to do OK, what, if you go into your project folder, you'll see that two new folders have been created for pro audio previews and pro video previews, which you don't have to really think about too much. But I just wanted to point that out. So now I'm going to teach you how to import your material into the project. But before I do that, I want to talk about saving and auto-saving. Um, and we'll get to where you do those settings. But for me, one of the things I'm going to do throughout this is I'm going to talk constantly about keyboard shortcuts. Because all professional editors use them all the time. And they work really fast. And they're not that hard to remember because you keep using the same ones over and over and over again. So the obvious way to save is Command-S, right? Or PC control S. Easy. Thumb, forefinger. Boom, 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 boom. The reason that you should get into the habit of this, you can keep autosave on. But um, in Final Cut, sometimes if you were rendering something and um, autosave came on, it would crash. That really happened. And I think it might happen in Premiere. I don't know because I don't keep autosave on. So I never have that problem. But I would say for that reason, it's safer to turn it off and to do your own saves, but for another reason. So you have autosave on. You're not used to using your thumb and your forefinger for anything. OK. Um, you did a, autosave did a save. You don't know when. Like you set it for every seven minutes or every 15 minutes, whatever it is. And then you're editing, and you do something super great. And then you mess it up. The autosave doesn't have what you just did, right? So you've lost it.
But if you did something really great, in your own opinion, and you did a save, you saved it. Then you keep working and you mess it up, that's okay because you can go back, you know, you don't save what you messed up. You can go back to that save and you'll have it. Or if you do a save as, which I'll talk about later, then you really have it. So I would highly recommend starting to do this. And it also, get, it also gets you into um, this sort of frame of mind about what you're doing. You know, you're working and, oh, I don't know, this dumb thing, that dumb thing, uh, I don't know, ugh, I'm gonna go have a cigarette, whatever. And then you're in the zone and you do a really great thing. And then you think, that was really great, save, right? So it also starts making you aware of how you're editing and whether you're just in a messy mode or collecting or whatever, bringing in new stuff, or you're actually doing something really good that you really, really like and you really want to save it. Save, save, save. So now you're going to learn how to import all your clips uh, through the media browser. So you've, you know, you've created your project and when it's open, if you look at the top, there are a lot of different setups for the screen. And if it didn't default to editing, which it didn't in my case because I have a preset saved, you want to make sure you've clicked on the editing layout, which is similar to mine, but there are little differences. And the first thing we're going to be working with is the project window, which is in the lower left. Um, and as you see, it's called, you know, Carbo 76A. And that's part of having short names so you can actually see what you're doing. Uh, if it's a really long name, you can't. Okay. The first thing you want to do is make a bin in your project window, which is a folder. They call it a bin. And in the lower right, there's an icon for new bin, which you can use. Or if you're working in Mac, you would do command front slash to make a bin. So command front slash maybe is faster or as you wish. Okay. So you have two bins and I'm just going to delete one because that was just for demonstration. So you make a bin and you call it Master Clips 7.3 so that you know that the footage in that folder is the footage that you shot on 7.3 and you make new folders each time you're going to bring in more footage. Then you want to select it. Anytime you have something selected, the action will, you know, go there. So you're going to be doing that a lot with different things. Um, there are two other tabs, Media Browser and Effects. If you open Brand New, you're going to see others, but I've sort of streamlined mine. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so the Media Browser window uh, is where you find your footage, and the way it opens, this is all crammed over here. So what you want to do is rest your cursor there and drag over so you can actually see things, right? So if you find that you can't see what's over there, just drag it over. And now we're going to take a pause because your stuff is wherever it is. Mine is, the real stuff is way, way down a bunch of layers. So I'm just going to drill down and then we'll go back to what we're talking about. So I've gotten down to the Carbo project and in there is my Carbo scratch disk. And in there is private, which is where the clips are. And it takes a moment sometimes for them to populate if you have lots and lots of stuff. But basically, there they are, all numbered um, and ready to be imported. So then what I do is Command A and right click and do import. Okay, select all of them, right click, do import, wait a moment, and there we are. So now, all of, I'll make this bigger, all of the clips are in your master clips folder. But you're not ready to start editing yet because there's still a few more things to do. If you want to look at clips in the window, right now I'm in list view, which I prefer but you can also see them as images. And you can kind of scroll through them and play them. Um, 
I mean, you might want to do that. I think that's not very necessary or, or helpful because once you're editing, you're going to be able to really look at them and it's better to look at them later. And what you might have noticed is that I was inside a folder and up here is this little white folder with an upright arrow and that's taken me back to the main project window and I'm going to put it back in list view so you can see better. And as I mentioned, there you, you probably have other tabs in your project window, probably info and history. Um, uh, and there will be other ones in the source window. I get rid of the ones I don't need. So info, you can, you know, open that tab and see what info is. Open the history tab and see if, if you are interested in it. If you're not, there's a little three-line hamburger on the right of every tab. And if you right-click on that, you can close it or undock it. So if you didn't want those other ones, history or info, you could just get rid of them, which is what I do. Okay, so now we've been working for a while. We've got all our footage in. It's very exciting. We're ready to do the next thing. So what do we do? I've taught a lot of students who are in a big hurry. And I've looked at their project folders when we're doing edits. And I've seen folders full of clips with numbers. And I've always said, how do you know what you're working with? And they're like, I don't, I don't have time. And the thing is, you really should have time because here you are and you've got 00, 0102023, whatever. You import new stuff, it's all going to be the same thing. You've got like six folders and each folder has 001. And when you're editing, that's all it says. It doesn't say, you know, dog barking, pizza, whatever the thing is that the image, the footage actually is. So you're editing stupid. So even though it seems like it takes a long time, you should take the time to name all your clips. So if you want to do that, you can rest, you know, slow double click and you can call this uh, dog running and you can call the next one pizza and the next one and you can look at them in this view but you'll also you can also look at them in the source window so we're going to get to the source window in a minute the thing is also that you can always rename them right so this was called pizza but you've changed your ideas and this is just you know the sausage close-up, whoops, misspelled, on the pizza, whatever, okay. Um, and the other thing is you never have to worry about l losing it because what you're seeing here is just data. Your clip is sitting over in that folder and those clips are called 0001, et cetera, right? But for whatever reason you want to see where it is, you do reveal in Explorer if you're in PC, and you do reveal in Finder if you're in Mac, and there it is, there's 001. Um, okay. The other thing about naming is that you're, you can work with it in ranked order, you know, A through Z or Z through A, and if you're looking for stuff, you actually want the names to be a little more specific. So in this case, we're making carbonara. If we called it carbo one, carbo two, carbo three, carbo four, five, um, that's no good. You be specific. You know, bowl of pasta. Da, 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 you know, so that you can actually find things more easily, and thereby again be a happier and faster editor. So let's say that we've named all our clips. What I'm going to do now is open the project actually exists with things properly named and whatever. I, this is just a, um, a, a, an example uh, f sort of from the start. Um, but since I have theoretically named all my clips, I'm going to do another save. But now you're going to learn about how to never, ever lose anything. OK. Um, I've just named all my clips. I had hundreds of clips. And I was saving, saving, saving. But I was done. I was going to leave for the day, or whatever, take a lunch break. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as. And I'm going to call it 76B. <clears throat> OK. Then I come back. I work for an hour, 
I've really done a lot of stuff. None of that is in 7-6-B. So I'm going to do 7-6-C. And I'm going to do that periodically throughout the day. I actually do do that periodically throughout the day. And at the end of the day, I'm going to call it 7-6-End. The next morning, when I come into work, I'm going to open up 7-6-End. I'm going to rename it 7-7-A. If I have lots of the first ones, I'm going to delete all of them. I'm just going to keep the end one. Same thing next day, next day. Now, I have a friend who worked at a really high-end CGI place years ago. So if she ever lost anything, that was it. That was her job. And I was talking to her one day about, oh my god, what if you lose things? And she said, There's, here's the system I use. And it works like a charm. I've never lost anything. And I said, tell me it. And that's what it is. And so it just means that actually the other day when I was setting up this example for you, I had a, a lot of the edit done and I did something wrong, which, you know, we all do, right? And I was getting ready to output it and I was looking at the project and right in the middle, the, the shots are all numbered and, you know, one through 25, right? And right in the middle, suddenly stacked on top of like 15, 16, and 17 was 23, 24, and 25. And I had done something freaky, I don't know how I did it, where that stuff got dragged back on top of it. So either I would have had to rebuild the entire middle of the film, or I could go back to whatever the date and letter of, was of that prior edit and find where I hadn't done that. So I saved myself a lot of work because I had that prior version. So, you know, there you go. Okay, so you want to make your first sequence and probably many more after that. And you can take one of your clips and just drag it into the timeline. But that's not a good idea because you might be working with footage that's shot in different formats, whatever the case. And the sequence is going to be set for whatever that first clip is that you put in. So um, it's better to set it up properly for, let's say, the start of the footage that you've shot. So you know that it's all good for what you're starting with. OK, so for starters, you want to make sure that your master clips folder is not selected. And then you're going to go to the bottom and where this thing looks like a little folded piece of paper. It has new items, and you left click to get to those. So there are a bunch of others that we'll go into later, but the first one is sequence. So you're making a new sequence. And again, this is like the other one. Don't say OK until you've gone through all the tabs. OK. So in this case, it opened right away to what I was working on. But obviously, there are a lot of choices. But in this case, I shot AVCHD. I shot at 24P. And so we're good to go. It just gives you all the info over on the side. Then you want to go into the settings. And it, the default should be fine. You just want to make really sure that right here it's reading 23976 because you shot 24P, OK? And down here it's showing that you shot 1920 by 1080, which I'm assuming you did. Or if you didn't, you have to change it. And then the next tab is for your tracks. So the default is that you have three video tracks and six audio tracks. So there's this rest on it roll and change function in Premiere in a lot of places where, like, see, it's turning to 9 or 10. So you can change something that way. You can also click on it and change it that way. So I'm going to make six tracks. Then in the audio, it gives you the default is stereo uh, or 5.1 or multi-channel or mono. So it kind of depends on how you shot. So I'm going to go with stereo. The ones you want to get rid of are these 5.1s. They're a nuisance. If they're in there, if you don't bother to do this, then if you have six tracks and you're working with your audio, 
and you want to drag something down to one of those tracks, it won't let you. So just get rid of them. I don't know what purpose they serve. Standard tracks are the way to go. So there you go, six standard tracks. If I wanted to save this preset, I could. Um, I'll leave that up to you. I'm just going to say OK, Enter, and now I have my first sequence. So it opened up in here, and it opened up over here, and they're both named sequence 01, which to me is not very informative. So I'm going to call it Carbo Edit because I might start actually editing this film soon. I know you might be really eager to start messing around, you know, dragging in clips, looking at them, but you can't really do that yet because you also have to set your preferences, which are really critical. Um, so I'm going to show you that now. And one of the things to remember as a student, or if you work somewhere and you share your laptop or your workstation with somebody else, this is so important, is that preferences are program-based not project-based. So I'm going to show you how to set your preferences. They're going to be beautiful. And it's going to be fine. But then Suzanne or Joe are going to come in and work, and they have different preferences. So when you come back in, mm, something might happen that you don't want to have happen. So if you're on your own, good. Set your preferences. You're good to go. If you're not, then if something is funky, then you know you need to go back into preferences and reset them for, you know, whatever, whatever you like to do. Okay. Some things are going to be, we're going to speed through them. I don't even need to explain them. Uh, other things I'll explain a little bit more. For me on a PC to get to my preferences, I have to go to edit. But if you're on a Mac, And there are a lot of them. And if you needed to go back in and change something, you can always just go to one in the middle. Um, but we're going to start at the top, because uh, they're all interconnected once you get into the Preferences window. But if you're on a Mac, you go to Premiere Pro, Preferences, and you go to the General tab. And that opens. And there are several elements in here. The first one is, uh, gives you the option of show home or open most recent. So if you're working on a whole bunch of projects and today you want to work on the third one, then if you have it set for show home, um, when you open Premiere again, it will show the list of all the projects and you select that one and open it. But if you're just working on one thing, then it's easier to say open most recent because you know you want it to open the one from yesterday. So um, we'll do open most recent for the purposes of today. Um, when opening a project, show open dialog. The bins, this is interesting. Um, you have various options. You have open in place, open in new window, or open new tab. So when you double click, it can do one of those three things. And I'll show you when we're back in the program what happens. But basically, if you double click to open in place, it's sort of like when I did the master clips and then I had that little white folder and I went back to it. If you do open in new window, it means you have a whole new window sort of floating on top of your screen, which is annoying because you can't see things. So I don't know, some people might like that, you know, no harm. But to me, it's easiest and kind of cleanest to always open in place. And so then these others are, if you wanted to create an option, you know, double click plus control and double click plus alt for, for to open a new window, that's fine. But basically, my standard would be to be double clicking and to open in place. Okay, and then there's this, which is open in new window or open new tab. And I have it set for open new tab, that's the default. So I would leave it there unless you discover that you don't like it doing that. Um, in the ones below, I have the first four checked, the next two unchecked, and the last two checked. I'm not going to explain all of them because we don't have enough time. Then I'm going to go to Appearance. And as you see, you're working in a very dark environment on the screen. Um, you can choose to make it much lighter or even lighter, or even lighter. 
So this is a personal preference. Um, and you can choose different highlight colors and stuff. Uh, I think most people just leave it at dark. Um, so I'm going to do that so it looks like what you would be doing. Okay, the next one is audio. The default is one I would leave it that mixed down type since we don't use 5.1, leave it. Um, honestly, some things I don't know about, I just leave them like 6 dB, whatever. Um, check the first one. The default might have play audio while scrubbing unchecked. You should definitely check that because when you're running through your sequence with the play bar, you can hear the and that's very handy. So, and of, of course, maintain pitch while shuttling. Then I would turn this off. I would keep the next two on and I would keep that one on. Forgive me for not explaining what everything is. Um, and then this render edit in audition files kind of isn't relevant because you're not working in audition. It's a separate program. So the default is scratch disk location, whatever. You can just leave it like that, okay? Audio hardware, uh, it depends on what you're working with. So, you know, if you're working with headphones or speakers like I am at home, then that's why it's selected for that. So you just have to figure out what's working for you. Here's autosave, which for me is turned off. Enough said. The next six items don't really have anything to do except, let's say, labels, if you want to label things by color. But the other things have to do with tape. I, I don't know what they are. Whatever. Then there's media. And again, you want to make sure you're at 23,976 if you shot at 24 or at whatever other rate you shot at. Time code, use media source. Uh, start at zero is fine. Um, and then uncheck all of these because these have a lot to do with making copies and writing XMPs and doing all kinds of stuff that just fills up your hard drive and you don't need any of them, okay? So then there's the media cache folder and you want to browse so that you can put it in that folder that you made, which is in your Carbo project and there's your media cache folder. And you're just gonna say select folder and now it's where it's supposed to be. Then take this off, uncheck that. It, in default, it'll be checked. And leave the rest of the page as it is by default. Then there's memory, which just has to do with your computer. But you want to make sure this is set for performance. If you have lots of gigantic files, my note is to say, use memory. There's playback. Um, this is mostly for capturing tape, so it's kind of moot. These two boxes should be checked. And the video device is for when you're working with dual monitors, so you can opt to have one of them always be playing your edit full screen. But most of us don't have dual monitors, so just leave it alone. Then there's sync settings. I don't know what these are for, to be perfectly honest. I just ignore them. Timeline. This has a lot of stuff. So the, these are about fade outs, fade ins, or cross fades. And so they're set to be 24 frames, one second long. Then your audio uh, transition is set the same to match. And your still image um, duration is, I think the default is five seconds. I make it three seconds because I don't really need like a five second still frame. With the timeline playback auto scrolling, you can have no scroll, page scroll, or smooth scroll. If you're set to page scroll, as you run through the timeline, the area viewable in the window will jump each time the play bar goes past the right side end. This can be disconcerting. So I put it on no scroll. The timeline mouse scrolling is uh, very much about personal taste, and it's really different. So if you're on vertical, and I'll show you this when we're in the program, it means that when you scroll with your mouse, you're running up and down, you're moving the tracks up and down uh, in your timeline window. When you're in horizontal and you use the mouse, it means you can go side to side, which I find much handier because it just means I can quickly scroll along to that part later in the edit or scroll back easily to the earlier part. So I'll show you that uh, when we're there. Um, I usually just set my default audio tracks to mono. You can decide what to do. It depends on how you recorded your sound. And then, I think that the default has boxes 3, 5, and 8 checked. I would uncheck 3 and 5, and I would just leave 
these three, the clip mismatch, the fit clip dialogue, and the restore open sequence. So are we done? No, we're on trim. And you know what? I don't use the trim window to edit, so I don't really care, but you can just set it for five frames and 100 audio time units. So if you start getting into using the trim window for editing, you might have to look at a manual or go to one of those other places.com. But anyway, so now we're done. We set our preferences. And just to remind you, we just went through all of that, which is good, and that's for us. And if Joe or Jane come in and they change it, remember, you got to go back to what you want for you. Okay, so this is the end of chapter one. You're ready to start learning about all the work windows. And let's say we're all going to go take lunch. And because we've done all of this, we want to do a good save, not just a regular save. So now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to do Command-Shift-S. And whatever the last one was, was it B, C, D, or E? I don't know. The next one is the next letter of the alphabet. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go have lunch. And we're going to come back. And you're going to learn a lot more. Thank you for watching this. I hope it's useful. Share it with anybody you want. I want to thank Princeton University for supporting me doing this because I did it in this beautiful studio. And Dan Kearns is the engineer for the University Broadcast Center. So he set it all up and he did a fantastic job and I want to thank him. So have a good time editing.